I also want to talk about the surge of violence that's erupted in Egypt. In Cairo, five people are injured, one critically, after a bomb on a bus exploded as passengers were getting off at a busy school intersection. That attack comes a day after Egypt's interim government labeled the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization, accusing the group of carrying out a suicide bombing that killed 16 people outside of Cairo. Former U.S. ambassador to Morocco and former White House Middle East advisor Mark Ginsburg joining us now from Washington. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Brian. You know, Ambassador, over the years, you've spent a lot of time in the Middle East, including Egypt, and one of the main concerns here is this violence as we run up to this constitutional referendum in January. The interim government, they're moving ahead with this army-backed plan for political transition. But interesting, I want to share this with you. One expert who studies the Muslim Brotherhood, quoted in the New York Times, is calling the designation a turning point and said it could lead Egypt into a civil conflict like they had in Algeria in the 90s. So just for us and our audience, put it in perspective how big a deal or not a big deal it is them giving them this label. Well, it is an incredible reversal of fortune, Brian, for the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, back in 1953-52, when Nasser and the colonels overthrew King Farouk and the Muslim Brotherhood teamed up with him, he then turned against them and ran them underground. When uh, President Sadat was assassinated in 1981, again, the Muslim Brotherhood was further run underground by uh, then-surviving Vice President Mubarak. So here we are again. And this is probably the most ominous designation that right. I've seen the Egyptian government throw at the Muslim Brotherhood yet. And when it comes to the violence, it seems to be getting a little more sophisticated. You're getting suicide bombs. They're targeting civilians. Uh, I put this question to Eamon Moheldin earlier, and I, I'm interested in your take. Is there a potential for a civil war in Egypt, or is it too sort of, you know, regionalized at this point? No, I think there is a potential. When you stop and think that so many of the Muslim Brotherhood members are, are being run underground or being, in effect, uh, thrown in prison, there's the inevitable vengeance factor that's going to take place. And remember, Brian, uh, close to 40 to 45 percent of the population uh, are probably voted for the Muslim Brotherhood in the last election. Now, they've lost considerable political support. But they've also basically spawned off an al-Qaeda offshoot that is largely responsible for the attacks against the Egyptian military in the northern Nile Delta as well as in the Sinai. And that portends an extraordinarily dangerous situation for the stability you know, of, uh, of Egypt in the months to come. I want to ask you about South Sudan, but this is one, this is one thing that personally from the cheap seats, it, it, it just makes me scratch my head. The Muslim Brotherhood takes over and they go to the extreme right? They get yeah. bounced from power and then the government goes to the other extreme. Don't they realize that th there has to be some middle ground? You can't just bounce from one extreme to the other. Well, the military has proven time and again that while it's very good at overthrowing governments and taking power, it's not really good at governing. And it's going to be a very serious question over the next few months whether or not the Egyptian people, so disgusted with the failure of President Morsi's government, ultimately sides with the military. Now, so far they have. But I've seen the military wear out its welcome pretty quickly after the last overthrow of the Mubarak uh, government. So it remains to be seen, Brian, how the government, the military government, is able to, in effect, keep the popular support on its side.